Hi, cat. <laughs> Come and get some mango, baby. Self-awareness is a superpower. My name is Kathy LaDonna. Welcome to Soul and Vibration. I hope the free thinkers are doing well. And if you're not doing well, I'm happy to remind you that you are the most powerful person that you know. You are the most powerful person that you know because only you can create your reality. Hey guys, today is Monday, August 14th and the energies in the day adds up and reduce the number to vibration. If today is your birthday, happy birthday. So when it comes to the spirit animal, we are working with the snake. So with the snake coming up as the spirit animal, um, immediately I think about the wisdom that snakes hold. I think about how they crawl on the, excuse me, on the ground. So it's almost like they can uh, hear or can, they, it's like they are so connected to the earth because they climb, they, they, because they move on the ground. Um, so when I look at the snake and the circle that it's making, it's bringing me to the thought of circle of life. It's bringing me to the thought of um, having access to, to all this information, having access to knowledge, having access to everything that we need. Um, when it comes to the tarot, We have the world card. Wow. Look at the circle on both cards. So with this energy here, these energies are bringing me to something coming full circle. Um, it's like entering into a new season, but something about this energy here brings me to the feeling of feeling prepared. It's like feeling ready. It's like entering into a new season, entering into a new cycle and feeling equipped, feeling ready, feeling prepared with the snake energy. It brings me to the thought of anything that you're going through in this moment. If you sit down and reflect, you've been through this before. This is nothing new. It might not be uh, exactly the way how, you know, in this situation, it might not be exactly the same as the last experience you've had, but this is not new. You've been through it before. I think of like, say a person might be going through something in their career, but if they reflect on say family dynamic, um, what's happening at work with the coworkers is very similar to something that happened at home with family or within a relationship or whatever. It's like things happen before and they keep happening. It's like a circle. It's like, it just keeps looping around and around and around and around and around and around and again. And it's like, we feel like, oh my God, when things happen, I don't know what to do and start freaking out and wondering blah, you know, what should I do next? This, that, and the next one. It's like, this has happened before. And you know, because it's happened before, that means you have experience. You might not have experience with this exact thing, but you have enough past experience to be prepared to address this thing that's coming up today, this thing that's coming up in this moment. And when I think of like the moon being in Leo, the moon is in a place where we have the courage within us to address what needs to be addressed. We have that fight within us to, to, to focus on what needs our attention. So normally, you know, we can find ourselves straying away or, you know, powering away from certain things where to me with where the moon is, it's like, you know, you have that courage in you to put up a fight if you need to. When I say put up a fight, if you need to, it doesn't necessarily mean in a negative way. It could just mean going after what's important to you, going after what's in your heart. Um, but with the moon, the moon is being opposed by Pluto. So with the moon being opposed by Pluto, I think of uh, moon and Leo energy, the inner world uh, wants to be nurtured or is nurtured 
by the thought of being expressive, by the by being seen. Because when I think of Leo energy, I think of the sun, and I think of how everything, um, you know, the the sun covers everything. And I think of that I am energy where it's like it is through other things we're able to see ourselves. So it's like through the response of others when we cook for them, um, when we do different things for them from their response, it's almost like we're getting a glimpse of ourselves. And when I look at the moon and Leo, I think about how it is within all of us to want to be seen, want to feel seen. And the moon is opposing Pluto and Capricorn. So Pluto energy deals with death, rebirth, transformation, control. Pluto is a serious energy and Capricorn is also a serious energy. And when I think about Leo, it's like, yes, Leo can get serious if it needs to. But for the most part, it's a vibrant, uh, it's a vibrant, youthful type of energy where Pluto like Capricorn energy is so serious. So when I think of the opposition, it brings me to the thought of needing to be serious, needing to take control, but then not even uh, with the moon and Leo energy, not even wanting to engage with anything that doesn't feel youthful and playful, but it brings me to coming to a common ground with things. So when it comes to say the energies in today, you know, the inner world, the moon is in a place where it doesn't want to focus on anything too serious or take itself too seriously. The moon is positively aspecting Neptune and Pisces. When I think of Neptune energy, I think of that energy we use for visualization, imagination. So think about how the moon is po moon and Leo is positively aspecting Neptune and Pisces. This is where we get into our, get inside of ourselves and we visualize seeing ourselves in all kind of roles, doing all kind of things, and just childlike, playful, dreamy, fairy tale like even a little bit delusional and dangerous, delusional and dangerous because with the positive aspect being made to Neptune, it's like I'm seeing myself in all kind of roles and I got the big courage from that Leo energy. So I'm seeing myself doing things that I probably can't do in this, in this life. I probably can, but you know, I, I don't fully believe I could do it in this life, but within myself, I could do anything. So that's where the whole dangerous aspect of that comes in but with the opposition between the moon and Pluto brings me to a common ground. It's like, you know, listening to that inner child, but at the same time getting out and adulting because it's necessary. And the more we put off and ignore certain things, the more of a problem, um, that is built up around these things. And we got to face it at some point within the day. There's this nice grand earth trying that's been happening through, um, that's been happening but I can see it so much uh, more clear now. And with that earth trine, it just brings me to say, you know, see, ser searching for practical, familiar ways to live our lives, practical, familiar ways to live our lives, practical and familiar because we need security and stability. And of course, most of us will feel like our security and our stability has been threatened in 2023 as this is a seventh year. And the number seven is a spiritual introspective energy where everything feels like it has slowed down. And more than anything, we might want things to speed up. You know, we want to experience things. We want stimulation. And from the lack of stimulation, it feels like everything is moving so slow or so still. And, you know, some of us want to go ahead and push things and make things happen. And I find when we push things and try to make it happen, um, sometimes we waste our energy and we make, we waste a good thing. Like I think of, like I've shared before picking fruit before time, because I don't want anybody else to get it. I want to get it, but because I picked it too early and I didn't set it properly, it spoiled, or even if it ripe, it didn't ripe the way it would have ripe if I left it alone. Um, when it comes to say today, the moon is the ruler of the day. And with the moon being the ruler of the day and the energies in the day adding up and reducing to the number two vibration, this brings me to um, really sensitive and emotional feelings within the day. But I like the way it feels. The reason why I like the way it feels to a certain extent is because the moon and Leo gives us that courage to dream and the moon positively aspecting Neptune allows us to dream in a delusional way. And I feel like that could be good in the sense that a dream is a blueprint to reality. Sometimes all it takes is for you to see yourself 
in a certain position, doing a certain thing, seeing yourself doing what has never been done. It's like as long as you can see yourself doing it and you believe what it is that you're seeing, then you can make it happen. And, you know, I think of the Neptune and Pisces opposing Mars conjunct Mercury and Virgo. And when I think of the opposition between Pisces and, and, and Virgo, it's applying visualization to action. I think about uh, some of our ancestors who worked extremely hard and didn't have a lot to show for it. And I feel like that's because what was missing was that Neptune dream, that visualization, seeing ourselves in abundance along with the hard work that we're putting in. And from our visualization and being able to see ourselves abundantly, we might not even have to work as hard because I personally believe, you know, success, the ratio to success is 20, 80, 20, just like the ratio to weight loss. 80% of the weight loss comes from the foods that we eat and 20% of the weight loss comes from the actual workout. I feel the same about success. 80% of our success comes from the mental foods that we're consuming and what's coming out of our mouth, which reflects our vibration on a whole and how we're creating. And then only 20% of our success comes from the physical labor that we do. But, you know, based on the way we've been conditioned to see things that kind of keeps us trapped in the, you know, trapped like the hamster on the wheel going in circles. We're doing all this work and barely seeing efforts from it because, you know, we've been conditioned to expect that bare minimum from all that work. So it goes back to the importance of the mind and just balancing both energies, visualization and work. Um, but yeah, today is Monday moon day. And when it comes to Mondays, like especially say this Monday where the moon is in Leo, self care is important, but the kind of self care that you want to do today, you want to affirm to yourself today. You want to you want to affirm positive things to yourself today. You also want to reflect and visualize seeing yourself doing all the things you want to do and just like bask in that energy and follow up with positive aff affirmations. Because for me, Monday is always a day for self care. And with the number two, the energy is adding up and reducing to the number two. I feel like, yeah, the energies are even more sensitive and call for even more nurturing. But Mondays are a day for self care. You know, most of us have to go off to work. We're busy doing things. So we don't get to stop and just tend to ourselves. But I find that days um, on certain Mondays, when that call for self care, when I'm not able to do self care, I could find my, you know, that feeling. When you get up and you're not ready to get up and you feel like you want to cry, but you got to keep moving. It's like, I feel like those days can feel like that. But with the snake energy and the world card coming out, it brings me to say entering into a new season, entering into a new cycle. It's like something about the moon and Leo energy um, and the moon and Leo energy, the nurturing, sensitive aspect to the day with the world card coming out and the snake it brings me to entering into a new cycle. But I think of, say, entering into a new cycle, but the cycle, um, where it's like, say we're all entering into a new season, but we're experiencing it different based on our frequency and our vibration. So that's what I'm getting when it comes to the energies in today, where it's super important today to dive into that good feeling of the moon positively aspecting Neptune. Yes, the opposition between the moon and Pluto will feel a little bit annoying as, you know, it feels like career and ambition is calling and you don't know how to answer. And if you don't know how to answer, don't answer. But you want to take up and make the most of the that good that good visualizing emotional feeling that you know the moon positively aspecting neptune brings i look at the day being the 14th the with the day being the 14th the number one is the self it reflects new ideas new beginnings the number four is structure it's discipline it's organization but one plus four is five and it brings me to say how um with the number five how the number five could bring this sudden and unexpected feel to the day. But I feel like that's a good thing. That's like the glitch in the matrix that lets in new and different ways of being or lets in opportunities or manifestations and things like that. But there is some kind of a glitch vibe to the day where meaning, you know, the day might feel like it's going one way and then all of a sudden it skips and things change a little bit. It's like there's this unpredictable feel to the day, but for the most part, 
it feels emotionally soothing. Um, it feels emotionally soothing, even though some of us could be experiencing the opposition between the moon and Pluto or the square between the sun conjunct Venus and Jupiter and Taurus. And again, when I look at the squares being made to the sun and the moon energy, um, both in Leo, it's that feeling of like, life is not allowing me to be great. It's like, it's not okay for me to be great is what I get with those squares. It's like, this is what I really want to do. But based on life, I need to do X, Y, Z. And I don't trust myself enough to go after what I want. So I feel burdened that I might have to do what the world wants me to do, even though I don't want to do what the world wants me to do. But I heard that I'll be safe if I do it that way. And it's come to a point where I'm even seeing how I would be safe if I do it that way. But again, you know, we're going to see what it is that we want to see that we've been conditioned to see. Such a pleasure sharing this message with you. If you'd like to book a natal chart reading with me or check out my exclusive contents only on Patreon, the links for that are in the description box below. Please let me know you're here with me by dropping me a orange heart in the comment box below. I would love to hear from you and look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Love yourself as if your life depended on it because it does. Take care of yourself and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.